Hey, Shalom, we are back. I'm going to drink a little water. Got our shirt a little wet, but I'm going to tell you some stuff that you never heard in Sunday school. Nobody never preached and taught you. Nobody never ever showed you. And this is really going to take you to a dimension that you need to question and ask yourself. Is this really true? Okay. Moses was the one who made Aaron his brother high priest. Did you just got that? See, they never teach you this. And this is what you never hear. That Moses made Aaron and the Levite tribe to become high priest over the twelve tribes. And Yah gave his approval by in Numbers 17 and 8. He took 12 sticks, carved each tribe name in each stick. The tribe with Aaron's name on it was Levi. And he placed each stick in the tent of testimony according to the King James Version. But it is called in the I.S. R, you got that over there? What is it called in ISR? The tent of what? Witness. Tent of witness in the ISR. But in the King James Version, it's called the tent of testimony. And the following day, the stick with Aaron's name on it and his tribe was sprouting blossoms and almonds. And this is what gave Aaron the okay. But I'm going to let the reader read you the story why this was done. You never knew that Aaron was chosen by Moses. You never knew that. That Moses chose Aaron to be the priest. But... <laughs> There's going to be a big controversy over that. And I'm going to show you where it stemmed from. Watch this. You, oh, hold a minute. You know how when you go into a church and the first thing you hear most of the people say, this church is a family. And only their family is in the offices. And only their family in position. Only their family is in rule of things. Oh, the only reason why they're there is because there's a family. Remember that statement. Come on and read. Number 17 and verse 8. Number 17 and verse 8. That's how we got the water on us. And it came to be on the next day that Moses went into the tent of the witness and saw the rod of Aaron mm -hmm. of the house of Levi had budded and brought forth buds and blossomed and bore right on. Okay, stop. I want you to go back to the first verse. Go to the first verse. Give them the whole rundown. I want you to really hear this. Speak loud so they can hear you, if you will. 17 and 1. Yes, thank you. And Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and take from them a rod from each father's house. Uh -huh. All their lead, leaders, according to their father's houses, mm -hmm. wear rods. Write each one's name on his rod. Okay. <coughs> Write Aaron's name on the rod of Levi. Uh -huh. There is one rod for the head of each father's house. Twelve rods, one rod for the head of each house. Come on. You shall then place them in the tent of appointments. Before the witness, uh -huh. where I meet with you. Where I meet with you at. And Come it on. shall be that the rod of the man whom I chose buzz, and I shall rid myself 
of the grand grumbling of the children of years in which they grumble against you. No, I'm saying what? What the, the what, what the whole still? Let me ask you something. What do you think <laughs> they were saying about Moses? They were saying he was picking him because he was his brother. His brother. Grumbling. Oh, the only reason why he become the high priest because he's Moses' brother. See? This religion, the Levitical priesthood, was nothing but a religion. That's it. That's it. Y'all telling me that it wasn't, but it's showing you right here that all it was was a religion because why? When you hear what goes on, you're going to see after the deliverance of the children of Israel, Aaron is no more mentioned. Until Moses strike the rock and Moses' hand had to be lifted up. Aaron never made it to the promised land. Moses didn't either. Well, you said 20 and up. Dead as a doornail, never made it. But come on, read. And Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and all their leaders gave him a rod. Uh -huh. each, for each leader, according to their father's houses, twelve rods, and the rods of Aaron was among their rods. Mm -hmm. So Moses placed the rod before Yahuwah in the tent of witnesses. Yes. And it came to be on the next day that Moses went into the tent of the witnesses and saw that the rod of Aaron of the house of Levi had budded and brought forth buds and blossomed and bore right on. And Moses brought out all the rods from before Yahuwah to all the children of Israel. And they looked at each man took his rod. And Yahuwah said to Moses, bring Aaron's rod back before the witnesses. Bring them back. To be kept as a sign against the, rebel, against the rebels so that you put an end to their grumbling against me lest they die. Lest they what? Die. <clears throat> And Moses did as Yahuwah had commanded him, so he did. <coughs> and the children of Israel spoke to Moses, saying, See, we shall die, we shall perish, and we shall all perish. See. Anyone who comes near the dwelling place of Yahuwah dies. Shall we be consumed to die? <laughs> See, this is the beautiful thing about it. This line of priesthood was doomed before it started. Because you want to know why? Man started it. Not the father. But now this other priesthood line. Hmm. What is it saying about that? Well... Let's see. Go to Psalms. 110th Division of Psalms. And I want you to reverse 1, 2, 3, 4 and stop there. Psalms. Let me get up. There you go. It had to get me like tablet there. Yes, yeah, Psalms 110. What verses? Start at the first verse and only read four of them, please. One to four. Yeah. Yahuwah said to my master, mm -hmm. sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Mm -hmm. Yahuwah send your mighty scepter out of Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people volunteer in the day of your might mm -hmm. and the splendor of set apartments. From the womb, from the morning, Woo. you have the dew of your youth. Yahuwah has sworn and does not relent. What? Yahuwah has sworn and does not relent. 
Yeah. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, I got a question. <laughs> Why didn't he say in the order of Aaron? Because you know the Levites was the priesthood, right? Tribe that was set aside, that couldn't inherit land, that had to do all the rituals and the preaching of the, the word and the killing of the heifers and the stabbing of, of, of the turtle doves and all. Why didn't in Psalms 110, why wasn't the Levite or the Levitical priesthood mentioned? They were even set apart from the there you go. See, all the way back to Abraham, our father set up a line that the priest shall and will come through. You haven't realized this. Even whenever Cain killed Abel, they thought that the line was coming through Cain and the Cain line was cut off. But the blessing came through Seth. Wow. What you're saying, Eddie? How? When you see in the first verse, it says that the Lord says to my master, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. First, who is they talking about here? Anybody got a clue? Who is the Lord and who is the Master? Exactly. Yahuwah is talking to Yahushua, telling him, Who sits at the right hand of the Father? Yahushua. See, a lot of y'all don't realize. He's telling them, sit right here and watch me make all your enemies your footstool. Now, I got a question. And this is going to make all y'all really sit here and, and realize. You have placed so much in the name of the idol that you were shown. If that name and that idol has so much power, why here in Psalm 110 it ain't the master that is doing it. But it's his father. But through you the master got all the power. The father told the son. Sit down. And I'll show you. What did verse number two say? The Lord sends your mighty scepter. Out of Zion, mm -hmm. rule in the midst of your enemies. Mm -hmm. Your people volunteer in the day of your might and mm -hmm. the splendor of set apartness. Yes. From the womb, from the morning, you have the dew of your youth. Your whore has sworn and does not relent. You are a priest forever. According to the order of Melchizedek. And there it is, right? That's everything right there to show you that Yahuwah promised the Messiah 
that he will be a priest according to the higher order of Melchizedek. This eliminates any problem. Why? Yahushua is not to be a priest in the Levitical order. I didn't say it. This is what the Father said. So he needed not to come from the tribe of Levi because he is up under Melchizedek. That priest line. And guess what? No matter how much you don't like it, but he's a priest forever. Because you know in the Levitical priesthood, if the male was to leave the priesthood, one of his descendants has to come and replace him. Right? Okay. So when Yahushua died, if he was in the order of the Levitical people, his heir had to come and replace him. But guess what? He had no heir. So when he left, guess who replaced him? Do anybody know? The Ruah. Because he told him, Nevertheless, it is speedy for me to leave, for if I do not leave, then the Ruah or the teacher can't come. Who's going to teach and guide you into all righteousness and in truth? <coughs> See? What? Say it again the helper. See, isn't it amazing? That one mentioned male treasure 2000 BC. And there is only three verses about him. Why would Abraham give this man? A tenth of his spoils. Why? Why would he give food? Melchizedek. A tenth of his spoils. When there wasn't no priest line established. Hmm? See, a lot of you preachers, I pray for you. A lot of the leaders, I pray for y'all. Because y'all do not know what you're doing. And what I mean you do not know what you're doing, you don't know the consequences that is behind the error of your ways. It's going to hurt to say I've been serving Jesus for all this long time. And he said, apart from me, I know you're not. It's going to kill you. It's going to tear you up. Because you want to know why? I need you to go with me to Hebrews 7. Matter of fact, I want you to start at the first verse. Hebrews and 1. Hebrews 7 or Hebrews 1? Hebrews 7, verse 1. For this Melchizedek, sovereign of Salem, priest of the Most High Elohim, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the sovereigns and blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, his name being translated 
and thee first sovereign of righteousness, and then also sovereign of Salem, that is sovereign of peace. See, the name Melchizedek is one that stems from the root, meaning king, and the other meaning righteousness. His name literally means king of righteousness, sovereign of peace. And see, and the funny thing about it, the name or the word Salem come from the word, it stems from the word Shalom. Shalom meaning not only peace, wholeness. See, another strange thing is that as great as this man was, we give no explanation as why usually a genealogy is given to one as a special family, you know, when they say this begot that and that begot this and this begot that, you know. But in Hebrews 7 and 3, what it says? Without father. Without father. Without mother. Without, mother, without, mother, without, without a genealogy. Have, day, woo, come on. Nor end of life, come on. But having been made like the son of Elohim, remained a priest for all time. Okay, now watch this. Having been made the son of Elohim, right? Like the son of Elohim. Like the son of Elohim. Can I ask you something? In the time of Melchizedek, mm -hmm. has the son of Elohim stepped on the earth? No. No. Yahushua Hamasiah never walked the earth. Or the Hamasiah, as you will call the Messiah, never walked the earth. So how? Was he like the son of Elohim? Because it tells you he doesn't have a father or mother or genealogy. Right? And we know that the son of Elohim or Yahushua was conceived by the Holy Spirit. I don't know. Now this is something that you're going to kind of play with and bother with. Because you ain't going to get it. <coughs> Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, he and peace. Because <laughs> of what his name means. Because of what his name means. Come on. Oh, please speak loud. What his name means. What it stands for. Right. And the funny thing about it, listen to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because of what it means and what it stands for. Woo. Too holy to say. But see, but see, this is the point. I want y'all to understand. Why was Melchizedek priesthood line above the Levitical priesthood line? Because the Father chose it. Because, the, come on here, darling. Because the Father chose it. Y'all always hollering and whooping about, I'm Baptist, I'm holiness, I'm this, I'm that. But can I ask y'all something? Is your line of worship 
in the same line of Mel Chesapeake. Do it again, darling. Mmm. They don't know, you don't know nothing about it. This stuff is not taught in your Sunday school class. Huh? You don't understand how important this is. This line of priesthood, y'all better hold on because a lot of y'all going going to fall out your seats on this. This line of priesthood was before the Ten Commandments. Before anything was written on stone, this line of priesthood was already established. And this is what you haven't realized. Abraham was counted righteous by what? His obedience. And this was before any commandment was wrote. <coughs> See? Darling. Go to Genesis 18. I want to show something. Genesis 18. Verse 16. 18, 16. Yeah. Start at 16. Read. And the men rose up from there and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them away. Yes. And Yahuwah said, Shall I hide from Abraham? No. Nah. What am I doing? Woo! Come on here. Since Abraham is certainly going to become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him so that he commands his children ah. and his household after him. To guard the way of Yahuwah, <laughs> to do righteousness and right ruling, Come on. that Yahuwah belongs to Abraham. You better listen to this. What he has spoken to him. Huh? And Yahuwah said, because the outcry against Sodom mm. and Amor is great, and because their sin is very heavy, mm. I am going down now to see whether... They have done all together according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I know. I'm going down. So the men turned ooh, away ooh, from ooh, there ooh. and went towards Sodom. But Yahuwah stood still before Abraham. You hear this? And Abraham grew near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wrong? I want you to stop right there. I want you to stop right there. They don't teach you this. But Yah himself came down and stood before Abraham. Huh? Now if I'm lying, I'm lying behind the book. Abraham Woo, come on here. They, what they say? Yeah, he was talking to the angels. But that ain't what the book said. The book said, Yah came down himself. And he stood before Abraham. Him and Abraham began to talk. See, a lot of y'all don't realize. A lot of you don't, 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 don't understand. That he used to walk and talk with Adam in the garden. Think about Adam would look and, and, and be able to understand that your presence is right here. Hmm? And y'all came and stood down because why? Why see see this is something that you don't understand. 
Abraham came from a line of people who served so many deities. And Yah himself spoke to Abraham and told Abraham, leave this place and I will send you to a promised land. Now, everywhere your foot tread, this is yours. Are you that special that y'all will come down and talk to you? Woo! Hold up. Have your obedience level came up to the level that y'all will stop and come and talk to you? Now you think about that picture that you worship, that you say is Jesus, and you have taken the authority from the Father and give it to the Son, saying that He is God in the flesh. Hmm? When the Son never did that His own self. So the Father came down and He talked to Abraham what He told Abraham. What him and Abraham was talking about. Watch this, watch this. Jesus. Oh, that is so good. I wish I had some more. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Abraham said, because our cry against Solomon and Lamar is great. Yes. Because their sin is very heavy. I am going down now to see whether they have done together according to the eye cry against it that has come to me. Yes. And if not, I know. So the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom, but Yahuwah stood before Abraham. Yes. And Abraham drew near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wrong? Now listen. So, wait, 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 wait a minute. Now see, I, 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 I want you to hold it right there. Abraham asked a question. Would you also destroy the righteous with the wrong? What did he say? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Would uh -huh. you also destroy the place and not spare it for the fifth of righteousness that were in it? Uh -huh. For be it for you to act in this way, to slay the righteous with the wrong, mm -hmm. so that the righteous should be as the wrong. Mm -hmm. For be it for you, does the judge of all the earth not do right? Mm. And Yahuwah said, If I find in Sodom fifth of righteousness within the city, then I shall spare all the place for their sake. Now I want you to stop right there. This is going to clear up all this craziness that you've been taught for so many years. Pastoring organizations that y'all join into every sanctuary is connected some way to a movement. And the funny thing about it is. On every corner, you got two and three and four different churches. The name is the difference. They're all preaching out the same King James Bible. It may be from Joyce Myers, or it may be from Cliff O'Dollar, or it may be from Benny Hinn, or it may be from, you know, T.D. Jakes. All these different Bibles. They all teach that is either based on King James, the New King James Version, the International Version, I mean, whatever version you're teaching on. My question is this. If all these denominations teaching what is right, how come you haven't found a way to 
come together and be right. You said this is a rehearsal, right? Well, if this is a rehearsal and his word says, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in heaven, we got a church on every corner, right? Right? In heaven, everybody got their own special meeting, praying place that they meet the Father in. Something wrong. Something wrong. If we're supposed to be doing the work of the kingdom here on earth, then my question is this. How come we got so many buildings, so many buildings, and nobody got any unity. Huh? You ain't going to be that in heaven. Everybody going to be around the throne. But I know you say that's different. Mm-hmm. All right, darling. Hebrews 7 and 11. This is going to tear you up. Woo, my father, I thank you for this word. Hebrews 7 and 11. The writer asks his audience. Truly then. Huh? If perfection were through the Leviticus priesthood. I want you to please listen to this closely now. Truly then, if perfection was through the Levitical priesthood. For under it the people were given the Torah. Huh? Why was there still need for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek? <laughs> Dolly, you better read that one more time. Because they didn't hear it. Truly. Truly then, if perfection were through the Leviticus priesthood, for under it the people were given the Torah, why was there still a need for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? For the priesthood be a change mm. of necessity, there takes place a change of law also. Woo. For he of whom this is said belongs to another tribe from which no one had attended at the slaughter place. For it is perfectly clear that our master arose from Judah, a tribe about which Moses never spoke of concerning priesthood. Stop! Stop! Moses never spoke of Judah. And you can't tell me Judah wasn't there. When they named the 12 tribes, the tribe of Judah was there. Moses never spoke to him. Because you want to know why? I'll tell you why. There's a difference in having a gift and the anointing. It's a difference. A gift makes you feel good, but the anointing destroys the yoke. You can walk out a service of a gifted speaking person and feel so good, but your burdens are still there. Versus when you go into anointed service 
And when you walk out, you leave your cares at the altar. What you're saying, preacher, do you want to know why Moses never spoke of the tribe of Judah? Because our father knew that that priesthood was not going to last. And he knew Moses did it. For what reason? What reason Moses made his brother the priest? When Joshua was right there at his every beck and call. Caleb was right there at his every beck and call. Anything moved. Caleb and Joshua said, My arm, if the Most High said we can do it, we can do it. So why wasn't they named as a high priest? So Y'all don't understand. Let me go a little further. On the basis of it, the Levitical priesthood, the people received the law. This statement reflects the two-part covenant form of the Mosaic law. On one hand, the people was given a commandment, which was the Ten Commandments, and they was told that they must obey them. On the other hand, if they did disobey, we could see forgiveness through temple rituals. This formed the second clause to the covenant. If the second clause was agobulated or was a negotiated totally, what does it say about the first clause? See, this is why all the laws was done away with. Because it gave loopholes to people that they can see in and do what you want to do. This is where grace and work come in. Verse 12. Yes, ma'am. Verse 12. Or oh, did you read verse 12? I'm sorry. For well, the priesthood being changed. Change, right. Of necessity, there takes place a change of law also. Mm -hmm. For he of whom this ill said belongs to another tribe. From which no one had attended at the slaughter place. For it is perfectly clear that our master across from Judah, a tribe about which Moses never spoke of hmm. concerning priesthood. And this is clear still if another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek. I watched it. Who has become not according Listen. to the Torah. A fleshly command, uh -huh. but according to the power Woo! of an endless life. Oh, y'all, 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 y'all didn't court that. You didn't court that. Who has become not according to the Torah a fleshly command, mm -hmm. but according to the power of an endless life? See, but, ooh, go hold, hold, hold still on that. See, where the Torah come from? Say it again. Okay. Ten Commandments he gave to Moses. But the Torah was about who? Moses and the Levitical laws. Yes. It was Moses and the Levitical laws. And as it says, that was of man. But Melchizedek wasn't appointed by no man. Oh my goodness. And this is why I'm finna say what I'm saying because I'm finna bring this, this to a close. The eighth child. The eighth child. Ushered in. 
and made the way that everybody who is claiming to be a Yehudian should at this point right now stand on your feet and give y'all some praise because the eighth child was the new beginning that opened the door for people watch this who has no history who has no name as the Bible refers to us, a people who is no people. Oh, y'all hear me? There's only one people on this earth that fits that. That you ain't got no history. Only one people. That every other nationality hate you because of your skin tone. But he told you they hated me before they hated you. And we're not talking about that blue-eyed, wavy-haired fella that got, that's on your wall. We're talking about the one that got hair like wool. Revelation 1 and 8, you know, in, in, in the first chapter of Revelation. Got hair like wool. Eyes like flame. Feet like burnt brass. That's the one who we talking about. And there's no picture of him. Because if it was, then the Ten Commandments was a lie. When it says, Thou shalt have no other y'all before me. And you want to know the funny thing about it? Abraham and them knew that it's out of commandment. Wow. Bay, I want you to get me one, one more. And let me see, can, can I find it? Where it says, I'm going to place it in their heart. Mm-mm-mm-mm. You, oh, I'm, I'm hearing you. Father, we thank you. You're place what? His, his, his laws in their hearts and in their minds. See, a lot of y'all didn't realize the book of Hebrews, I'm going to say this. Hebrews 10 and 16, baby. Yeah, I'm on it. The book of Hebrews is for every Yehudian to realize and know that this is my book. Hebrews 10 and 16. What it says. Come on. Give them my laws until their hearts and their minds, I shall write them. Yes. And their sins and their loneliness, I shall remember no more. <laughs> now, where there is forgiveness of these, Come on. there is no longer a slaughter offering. Mm. Any. Come on. So, brothers, having bonus to enter into the set apart place by the blood of Yahushua, <laughs> by a new and living way. Which he instituted for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of Elohim. Come on! Let us draw near with a true heart. Come on! In completeness of belief, having our hearts sprinkled from a wicked conscience and our bodies washed with clean water. Let us hold fast the confession of our expectation. Let us. Come on. In order to stir up love and good work. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. 
Come on. And in the habit of some, but encourage it and such much more as you see the day coming near. For if we sin perfectly after we have received the knowledge of truth, yes. there no longer remains a slaughter offering for sin. Stop right there. If you know that that name is associated with an idol and you continue to serve that idol, there is no more atonement. This is why I'm crying out to the people. Listen at what I'm saying. Study all this. Turn from that idol that sits on your wall, that sits on your church walls, that's all around your, your, your spiritual. Matter of fact, you even got some of them hanging on your neck. You're still on the cross. Turn from that idol. That is not the one. That your father, my father, son, to save you, to save me. That idol couldn't save itself from water running on it. Please, I beseech you, brothers. Understand the significance of the story of David. That Levitical priest line? No. All that spun off from it, them religions that you were so wrapped up in that you would fight me because I say something about it. Woe be unto you. And I say this with honesty. I want y'all to listen to me. Come January, it'll be three years that me and the Father only, no man taught me none what I'm showing you. All this was revealed through spending time with the Father. January will be three years. June will be three years and a half. I'm coming. I'm coming. And I give any one of you, any one of you, free rim that we may sit down and see what the scriptures is really saying. And I'm going to tell you like I told the latter day saints, I may not be the best, but I'm in the shed. And they didn't understand what I was saying. So let me make it plain to you. I may not be the sharpest tool in our Father's toolbox, but I am the most used. That makes sense. Whenever he needs something done, he can reach and grab me. I might not be the sharpest, but I always get the job done. I bid you shalom. Study this and apply it to your life. Peace.